Chapter 4, The Tissue Level of Organization. So the learning objectives of this chapter is to understand the structure and function of the four main tissues in our body, epithelium, connective, muscle, and neural. In this chapter, we are going to focus on the epithelial and the connective tissues and lightly talk about muscle and neural tissue. We'll uh, talk about bones and cartilage. We'll uh, talk about how uh, tissues can come together to form membranes. And we'll end with how tissue can heal itself when it is damaged. So we've been working up the hierarchy of life since the beginning of the semester. We uh, studied atoms and elements and how they can come together in certain proportions to form uh, compounds and molecules. And they come together to form organelles and organelles coming together to form cells. So with every step higher in the higher hierarchy of life, um, there's new properties added on. So it gets more and more complex. Similar cells with similar function will come together along with the extracellular matrix will come together to form tissues. And a, a bunch of tissues, different types of tissues will combine to form the organs. And the organs then come together to form the organ system and then the organism. Our focus on this chapter is tissues. It's very important. This chapter is a very important chapter because it's the foundation for you to understand every other chapter in the book. Even though the human body is so complicated, there's only four basic type of tissues in the body. The first type is called epithelium. Epi means on top of. It will cover and line surfaces and it can also secrete. So we'll study um, each one of them in detail. Connective tissue, you know, the word connect is there. So it fills up all the internal spaces in the body. Uh, it will give a lot of support and energy and it'll, since blood is connective tissue, it can transport nutrients. Muscle tissue, the only tissue that can contract and then it can bring about active movement in the body. Neural tissue are special cells that can conduct a nerve impulse. A tissue is a collection of cells and their cell products that have a specific function. They will combine to form organs and there's four types. And each one of them will have a very unique architecture. Their structure will be very different and their function is also different. How, how did these four tissues um, come about? So this is uh, the embryonic origin of tissues. So when the sperm cell and an egg cell successfully fertilizes to form a zygote, it will undergo divisions to form a structure called blastocyte. And there are three main layers in the blastocyte, the ectoderm, the endoderm, uh, and the mesoderm. So ecto means outside. So these cells will differentiate to form skin cells, neurons, and pigment cells in our body. The mesoderm differentiates to form all the muscle tissue like cardiac, skeletal, smooth, your blood cells. And endoderm will uh, differentiate to form ep epidermal cells, neural cells, some pigment cells. It's also depicted here in this picture on the left. What is the nature of epithelium? Epi means on top of. So epithelium is widely found in the body and it lines and it covers. So when you look at a cartoon picture of epithelium, you can see that um, 
it exhibits cellularity. That means all the cells are bound together by structures that will exhibit them together. So they are found in sheets. They exhibit polarity. That means uh, the cell organelles, so you can see the nucleus, the Golgi and endoplasmic reticulum, they are not evenly distributed in the cell. So the cells have a apical surface and a basal surface. So that is called polarity. It does not have a blood supply. So it is avascular. And there will be stem cells here. So it is very uh, regenerative. For example, skin is a type of epithelium. So, you know, you shed skin every day and they can regenerate every day. So they are highly regenerative. So epithelium are cells that line and cover body surfaces and cavities. They exhibit cellularity, polarity, vascularity, regeneration, and uh, they also have special cells that can produce special secretions. So they are very glandular. The main function of epithelium is protection, secretion, absorption, excretion, filtration, diffusion, and the sense receptors are here, So, and also sensory perception. So they have a whole range of function depending on where in the body they are found. So the, this picture is talking about cellularity. How, how are they attached to each other? That's why they are found in sheets. You know, like when you have a, get a sunburn and then you've seen how the skin peels off in sheets so that is epithelium so this connection between cell to cell is because of proteins and this is very important to stabilize the cell, cell position to provide stability and support to keep all the cells together so that they can function one of them is a tight junction See, it looks like somebody stapled the two cell membranes together. So here's the adjacent plasma membrane. And we have transmembrane proteins that is like tightly sealing up the two membranes together. So that is called tight junction. When proteins, like it's called connexons, that, fo that form uh, uh, a portal between the two cells, like a gap between the two cells so that they can communicate, they can exchange ion and nutrients, and they can uh, send signals between cells that is called gap junction. Anchoring junctions, you know, as the word suggests, it's going to anchor one cell to the other and also the cell to the bottom. So this looks like the proteins are zipping up the two, uh, the plasma membranes together. And here it's like a girdle. So the transmembrane glycoproteins, it's, it has like a tongue and groove kind of action, thereby keeping the adjacent cells together. And then in, so this is uh, between cells. The connection between one layer of uh, cell on the top to the cell in the bottom is like a root-like uh, root structure. It is called hemidesmosome. So between cells is desmosome. In the bottom of the cell, it is called a uh, hemidesmosome. So the tight junctions, adjacent epithelia are tightly held together by transmembrane proteins that will regulate selective movement of solutes along, across the epithelium. Gap junction is an intercellular pathway a portal, a gap between the cells so that they can communicate with each other. Anchoring junctions are protein complexes that will adhere cells, one cell to another cell and also to the extracellular matrix. And this is accomplished by protein structures called desmosomes, hemidesmosomes, cell adhesion molecules, adherence molecules. So uh, they, all these proteins will give cellularity to the epithelium. Because epithelium is avascular, how can a tissue live without blood supply? 
it can only survive if nutrients from the bottom layer diffuses up to nourish it. So epithelium that are tightly connected to each other will sit on a membrane called basement membrane or basal lamina. That in turn has two layers, lamina lucida, a clear layer, and lamina densa. Lamina lucida is secreted by the epithelium and it is a good barrier to proteins. Nutrients can diffuse through, but unwanted proteins cannot. Lamina densa is a dense layer because it is full of fibers and that is produced by connective tissue that is found under it. So epithelium will get its nourishment from connective tissue. So lamina densa will provide uh, strength to the basement layer. Dispersed among the epithelia here, we have germinative cells or stem cells. So that's why it is highly regenerative. And then here's a cell, uh, this cell is called goblet cell, which can also be found in the epithelium. It's called goblet because it looks like a drinking glass, goblet glass, but here it will secrete mucus. It is found in your respiratory tract and um, digestive tract. How is uh, epithelium classified? It's classified depending on its shape. If the cell is irregular shaped, it is called squamous. If it is square, cuboidal. If it is rectangle, it is columnar. If it is only one cell layer thick, it is called simple epithelium. If it is more than one cell layer thick, it is stratified epithelium. So we have simple squamous epithelium, cuboidal, columnar, and then uh, pseudostratified epithelium. Um, even though it's one layer thick, it looks like it's more than one layer because the nucleus is found in different heights, but all of them will touch the basement layer. So false, it gives you a false impression that it's stratified. Stratified squamous epithelium is a whole bunch of many layers of uh, squamous cells. Uh, here we see two layers of cuboidal cells. So it's stratified cuboidal and then trans, tra, uh, stratified columnar. Transitional epithelium uh, is found in places uh, which can, um, like your bladder that can fill up and then it can change shape. So it transitions, it has uh, different forms. Uh, it is found in the bladder and urethra. So we'll look at each one of them uh, in more detail now. We have to know the structure of simple squamous epithelium. You mean all the epithelium. You have to know where in the body it's found and its main function. So here is a simple squamous epithelium. It is only one cell layer thick and the cells are irregular shaped with a bulging nucleus. So this is what uh, it will look like in the microscope. The study of tissues is called histology. So this is a microscopic picture of uh, the cells. It is found in the mesothelia lining all the ventral body cavities. Endothelium that lines the heart and blood vessels portions of the kidney tubules, alveoli of lungs, inner lining of cornea. The main function is to reduce friction. It controls vessel permeability and it can perform absorption and secretion. Simple cuboidal epithelium is one layer of cube cells. They are found in glands, ducts, parts of the kidney tubule and thyroid gland. Function is limited function of secretion and absorption. One thing to remember here is, if a cell is only one cell layer thick, it will be found deep in the body because it, it, it is not very protective. Whereas if it is stratified with many layers, it is found closer uh, to the outside of the body. For example, your skin, your tongue, the inside of your cheek, they all stratified squamous epithelium. So we see many layers of irregular cells. 
A very good example is the surface of your skin, lining of your mouth, your throat, your esophagus, your rectum, your anus and vagina. They are very protective in function. They protect you against abrasion, pathogens and chemical attacks. Stratified cuboidal epithelium. So we see two layers of square cells. So this uh, looks like some kind of a duct and uh, they will um, function in protection and secretion and also absorption. Simple column epithelium. It is only one layer thick and it is column shaped. And this picture is a uh, interstitial uh, lining so that you can see the cytoplasmic extension called microvilli uh, that will increase the surface area of your intestinal lining. So it lines the stomach, your gallbladder, your uterine tubes and collecting ducts of kidneys. Function is protection, secretion and absorption. Pseudostratified is the one that looks like it's stratified, but it is not because every cell is touching the basement layer because the nucleus is found in different heights. Uh, it looks like it is uh, stratified when it's not. Here we see an example of uh, cells taken from the trachea and they have cilia. So this can sweep mucus over it. So it lines the nasal cavity, your trachea, your bronchi, and also in the reproductive tract. Function is secretion and to uh, move a mucus over it. Stratified columnar epithelium is uh, more than one layer, a few layers of columnar cells. They are found in the pharynx, epiglottis, anus, mammary glands, salivary glands, and the urethra. Function is protection. Transitional epithelia, here is an example uh, of uh, a transition. It can transition between two forms. So this will be found in areas where it has to enlarge, when the tissue has to enlarge to accommodate, like in the urinary bladder, where as the bladder fills, it will the cells will get flattened out. So in an empty bladder, you can see the cells are like dome shaped and like circular shaped. Whereas when the bladder is full, it flattens out. So it's found in the urinary bladder, the pelvis of the kidneys and the ureters. So this can permit expansion and it can permit uh, uh, stretching and recoiling. What are some of the modes of glandular secretion that can be found in epithelial cells? So the, the glandular tissue is epithelium that will infold to form special secretory uh, organs. So me merocrine secretion. So here's an example of merocrine secretion that is a good example is your salivary glands. Here, the cell will remain intact and the Golgi apparatus will make uh, the secretion. It will pack it in a vesicle and by exocytosis, it will leave the cell. So this is how salivary glands, pancreatic glands and eccrine sweat glands work. In apocrine secretion, the top of the cell, so it will break off. So this is an, a typical example of mammary gland and milk production. So milk actually ha has a little bit of the cytoplasm and also your axillary sweat glands. In holocrine secretion, the whole cell will burst. A good example is the sebaceous gland that will secrete oils that is usually found attached to a hair cell. Moving on to the next tissue type is connective tissue. There's a clue for you here, it, it connects. There's several functions of connective tissue in the body. It's the most predominant tissue in our body. It provides the structural framework of your body. I'm often reminded, uh, like when you're driving by, you'll see um, uh, how they build houses. So this is the framework of the house. 
and then everything else is added on to it. The insulation, the drywall, the electric, everything is added on to it. Similarly, the connective tissue is the framework of your body. It encloses organs, protects and separates organs. They connect one tissue to another. For example, ligaments will connect bone to bone and tendons the muscle to the bone. They will form supporting uh, and protective tissue like joints, uh, bones, and cartilage. Uh, adipose tissue, they will store nutrients. They also have a function of cushioning and insulating our organs. Uh, blood is also a connective tissue, so it will play a huge role in transport of nutrients and protection because of the immune cells that's found there. Your brain is protecting your, your sorry, your skull is protecting your brain, so it plays a huge role in protection. So here, if you say connective tissue, you'll see a matrix, fibers, and special cells. There are three main types of connective tissue, connective tissue proper, fluid connective tissue, and supporting connective tissue. In connective tissue proper, we have loose and dense. So they come about with the amount of fibers that are found. In loose, there's less fibers. In dense, there's more fibers. Fluid connective tissue includes blood and lymph. Here the matrix is a fluid. And in supporting connective tissue, the matrix is very strong, like it's rubbery in a cartilage and uh, crystalline as in bone. So we look at uh, each of the connective tissues. So the, if you study the anatomy of a connective tissue, here's a cartoon of all the structures in a connective tissue. The, the background is called the ground substance or the matrix. And then we have special cells. They are like shown in different colors. And all these lines are the fibers. So some of this, let's go over the list of uh, some of the special cells. The fibroblast will secrete the matrix. They, will, they are responsible for maintaining the chemistry of the ground substance. Fibroblast is the matrix. Fibrocytes will make all the fibers that you're seeing here. Adipocytes are fat cells. They will have a drop of fat. The nucleus is pushed. It, looks, it will look like a signet ring. Adipocytes, source of energy. Mesenchymal cells are stem cells. They can differentiate to either fibroblast or like um, uh, uh, macrophages, etc. Macrophages are the immune cells. They are phagocytotic. That means they can engulf other debris, uh, dead cells, or like a, a, a pathogen or an infection like a bacteria and virus. They'll, they will destroy it. Uh, there's both fixed and free. The fixed will be attached to uh, a fiber. The free ones are moving around in the tissue. They can migrate. Mast cells are responsible for the inflammation reaction. When you get hurt, they can release histamines, uh, heparin. Basophils are leukocytes that can also play a role in uh, the inflammation reaction. Lymphocytes are cells that can develop into plasma cells uh, that can make antibodies. So they all immune in function. Microphages are phagocytic cells. They will respond to signals from macrophages and ma mast cells. Examples are neutrophils and eosinophils. Melanocytes are the pigment cells. They give, uh, they synthesize and store brown pigment called melanin. Coming to the fibers, there are three fibers. The collagen fibers are, are the thick ones. See, they are unbranched, they are long and straight. They are very strong and flexible and they can resist a, a stress or a blow from one direction. Most of the, all the tendons and ligaments are very rich in collagen fibers. Reticular fibers will look like a fishnet. 
they are very strong, they are interwoven and they can resist uh, force from different directions. So they are very good for um, wrapping delicate organs. Elastic fibers are branched, they are thin and as the word says, they are very, very flexible. So they can rebound, they can stretch and rebound. So the elastic ligaments of the vertebra is a good example. Under connective tissue proper, we have loose connective tissue because there's not many fibers here. It is an excellent packing material. Areolar connective tissue holds organs in place and it can attach the epithelial tissue to the underlying tissue. It is a reservoir of water and nutrients and salts for the uh, neighboring tissues. So this is found right under our skin. So a good example is the subcutaneous or the hypodermis of the skin. Adipose tissue is full of adipocytes or fat cells. So the cell is full of fat that the nucleus is pushed to one side. It's found uh, under the skin and like, you know, every squishy part of your body, like your bottom, your breast, uh, around your stomach. Uh, they provide uh, cushioning and padding and they can insulate. Reticular tissue, they are full of uh, supportive fibers. So they will cover delicate organs like spleen, liver, lymph nodes, and bone marrow. And you can see uh, they, they provide a, a supporting framework. So these are the three types of uh, loose connective tissue that comes under connective tissue proper. Connective tissue, uh, connective tissue proper in dense, it's called dense because it's tightly packed with um, fibers. Dense regular, so you can see in this histology picture, they are tightly packed and they are parallel collagen fibers. So that's why it's called dense regular. A good example is tendons and ligaments and also aponeurosis. So these are flat sheets of uh, tendon uh, that will uh, you know, attach to muscles. So dense regular connective tissue is found between skeletal muscles and the skeleton, between bones for stabilizing the position of internal organs. They can cover skeletal muscles and also parts of the deep fascia. Function to provide a firm attachment and it can conduct a, conducts a pull on the muscles, reducing friction between muscles. It can stabilize the position of the bones. Dense irregular, as the word suggests, the fibers are not regular. They are um, randomly uh, found. They are interwoven networks of collagen fibers layered in the skin around the cartilages, around bones, and they can form the capsules of certain organs. Elastic tissue is made of elastic fibers. They can be found between the vertebrae of the spinal cord, spinal column, and a few more examples are given the main function being to stabilize the position of the vertebrae. And it can also act as a shock absorber. Blood. You know, it, it's uh, strange to think of blood and bone as uh, connective tissue, but it is. Uh, this is fluid connective tissue because the matrix is a water medium. It's watery. Blood plasma is like um, 70 to 80% water. So the matrix is watery with a lot of dissolved proteins and you find the specialized cells, red blood cells, erythrocytes. They carry oxygen. Uh, white blood cells, all of these, monocytes, lymphocyte, neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, macrophages. So they are all immune cells. Platelets, so uh, thrombocytes, they play a huge role in blood clotting. Lymph and uh, blood is part of the cardiovascular system. So it's going to flow through your arteries and veins and capillaries. 
the lymphatic system will contain a fluid called lymph, which is full of uh, white blood cells. So these are the spill over from tissues and they will drain uh, into the blood supply via the lymphatic system. So that there are two examples of fluid connective tissue. It is bone and uh, blood and lymph. In supporting connective tissue, we have cartilage and bone. In cartilage, there are three types of cartilage. Uh, so cartilage has a rubbery matrix. It is uh, a proteoglycan derived from chondroitin sulfates. The special cells of the cartilage are called chondrocytes. They are found in its own chamber called uh, lacuna. This is also uh, avascular. And cartilage will be protected by a, a layer, by a membrane called perichondrium. It will have two layer of cells, the outer fibrous layer, which is protective in function and the inner cellular layer, which can uh, will have stem cells and it can divide. Hyaline cartilage, it, founds, it is found between the tips of your ribs, bones of your sternum, covers bone surfaces at synovial joint, supporting the larynx, your trachea, your bronchi and some parts of the nasal septum. The main function of hyaline cartilage, uh, it is very stiff, but it is very flexible. It can reduce friction between bony surfaces. Elastic cartilage is full of elastic fibers. It is very supportive and it can end and rebound quickly. It is found in your external ear and uh, epiglottis. In fibrocartilage, we see densely interwoven collagen fibers, which is very tough and uh, it will uh, prevent uh, bones from rubbing against each other. It is found in your knee pads, uh, between the pubic bones and intervertebral uh, discs. Bone is uh, very protective in nature. It is also a storage reservoir of uh, minerals. It gives uh, the framework for your body like a skeleton, it can store minerals. So it's a reservoir of minerals and it's in the bone marrow that we make, your, we make our red blood cells and white blood cells. The matrix is solid here. So it is crystalline calcified calcium salt with a lot of collagen fibers. Unlike the cartilage, this is very vascular. It has a rich supply of blood. The bone cells are called oste osteocytes. So if you study like a, a, this is a microscopic uh, histology of bone, and then it has a central canal where you see the artery and veins. And the osteocytes are found in concentric circles around it. So it's all a colony. So one complete colony that is dependent on the blood supply is called as an osteon. And the, the, they have cytoplasmic extensions that is reaching out to the blood supply for nutrients. They are called canaliculi. So this one, the circles of osteocytes are called lamellae. And the lamellae and the osteocytes that are found in the periphery are circumferential lamellae. The, mem the protective layer that protects the bone is called periosteum. It also has two layers, the cellular layer, which will have stem cells for division and the fibrous layer, a lot of fibers for protection. So it is a highly vascular connective tissue, dense connective tissue that will protect the bone. Membranes are thin sheets of tissue that cover the body, they line body cavities and they cover the organs and they form a physical barrier. So membranes are made of both epithelium and connective tissue. Mucous membranes, they line cavities that lead to the exterior of the body, like your uh, digestive tract, respiratory, urinary, and reproductive tracts. So you can see the epithelial layer sitting on um, the basement layer here. So because in mucous epithelium is full of goblet cells, they secrete mucus. So that is called mucous membrane. 
serous membrane is found in the sealed internal body cavities, like your abdominal cavity, your, the, your cavity where your heart is, where your lung is. So they are called peritoneal, pleural, and pericardial cavities, and they will secrete a, a solution called transudate. Cutaneous membrane is referring to your skin. So you can see how the skin, uh, stratified squamous epithelium, is going to sit on loose areolar or connective tissue. And then that sits on dense, irregular connective tissue, thereby giving a lot of strength to your skin. That is the cutaneous membrane. Synovial membrane is a, a broken up membrane that is found in joints and they secrete a special fluid, joint fluid called synovial fluid. So these are the four main membranes found in our body. Internal framework of the body is called fascia. So the connective tissue proper that provides strength and stability, maintaining position of the internal organs and providing a route for blood vessels, lymphatic and nerves. There are three types of fascia. Superficial fascia is very close to the skin. See here, it's right between the skin and the underlying organs. It is made up of areolar tissue and fat. It is also called as the hypodermis or the subcutaneous layer. It is found very close to the outside of the body. So it is called superficial fascia. A little deeper than that would be the deep fascia. It forms a very strong fibrous internal framework. Uh, this one is made up of dense connective tissue. It can form capsules, uh, uh, tendons and ligaments. It is bound to capsules, tendons and ligaments. Subserous fascia is found between the serous membranes and deep fascia, and it is made up of areolar connective tissue. Muscles. So these cells are specialized cells with special proteins like actin and myosin that can uh, contract. You know, epithelial cell cannot contract, but a muscle cell is specialized to perform contraction. There are three main types of muscle tissue. Skeletal muscle tissue is found padding on the, the skeletal system. So if you look at the cells, you can see these lines. It's called striations. The cells are very long. They are multinucleate and it is voluntary. These uh, muscles are voluntary muscles. They will move and stabilize the posi position of the skeleton. They're going to guard the entrance and exit of the digestive system. And it's found in so many parts of the body, skeletal muscle. So it is uh, striated, multinucleate, it's voluntary. Cardiac muscle, so this is not branched, whereas on the other hand, cardiac muscle is branched, it is striated, uninucleate, and then it has a special, special structure called intercalated disc. Thereby, cells can community, uh, communicate fast. So a good example is the cardiac muscle tissue, which is very, very unique. Uh, branch striated single nucleus and connected by intercalated next, uh, disc, intercalated disc. The smooth muscle are spindle shaped cells, uh, uninucleate, it is not striated. So the cardiac muscle and the smooth muscle are involuntary. They are short spindle shaped smooth muscles and they are found in the walls of the blood vessels uh, and also in the digestive urinary reproductive tracts. Neural tissue, we will study uh, the muscle and neural tissue in detail later in this semester. So if you take the neurons, the neural tissue that's found in our body, they are special cells that can conduct a uh, action potential. The only cells uh, here you can see, you know, it can conduct a nerve impulse or an action potential. So if you take the, the nervous tissue, there's uh, neurons and supporting cells called neuroglia. So if you study the structure of the neuron, it has a swollen head called the cell body with a lot of cytoplasmic extensions called dendrites. And you can see the nucleus, the um, mitochondria, it has all the cellular organelles. It has a very unique long cytoplasmic extension called the axon. 
that will divide uh, to form the axon terminals where synapses can happen. So the action potential will shoot down the axon and by a release of neurotransmitters, it will transfer the message to the next neuron. The supporting cells are called neuroglia. There are many different types. Uh, they will uh, maintain the physical structure of the tissues. They will make sure that the neurons will get their nutrients. They can uh, perform phagocytosis and they uh, maintain the chemical composition of the cerebrospinal fluid. So the last concept here is tissue repair. How does our body heal itself when the tissues are damaged? So here we see a, a little boy, he has a, a bruise, the tissue is injured. So what happens just think about the times when this has happened to you. When the tissue is damaged, the mast cells that we studied, they wake up and then they activate the inflammation reaction. So what is inflammation reaction? The blood flow to the site of injury will increase in, in response to chemicals, like they will uh, secrete uh, histamines, heparin, prostaglandins. So they will trigger the inflammation reaction. In increased blood flow, that means it's supplying the damaged area with more nutrients and oxygen so that it can heal fast. Increased uh, vessel permeability. So you can see something oozing out. That's nothing but blood plasma. And then the pain receptors here are sensitized so you feel, start to feel pain and it bothers you. That's why children cry. The inflammation reaction also increases the temperature in that region. This increased oxygen and nutrient supply, all the phagocytotic cells, macrophages and microphages will uh, move into the region and get rid of the bacteria and virus. Uh, the toxins are beginning to get, uh, will be removed. So over a period of time, two hours, there is a cleanup process that will slowly uh, get rid of the toxins and the healing process will start. Regeneration is the repair of the damaged tissue after inflammation subsides. Fibroblast will move in the area and it will start to lay down collagenous uh, 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 fibers. So that's why you see a scar. But over a period of time, it will be remodeled and the, and the scar will be, uh, it will slowly fade away if it is a small bruise. So this is how tissue healing um, happens. And I hope this helps.